E-Town Hall in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, it's E-Town, celebrating more than 30 years on the air. We're featuring highlights from the E-Town archives this week, including live performances by Eliza Gilkison, Mark Bouchard, Arlo Guthrie, and more. I'm Helen Forrester. Right now, here comes our host, Nick Forrester. Thank you, Helen. Hello, everybody. Welcome to E-Town. Happy summer, mid-July, the dog days of summer, the month of, I guess, celebrating revolution for both France and the U.S., at least. And I know sometimes it seems like we're heading there again, given what's going on lately. But just know that July is also the month of World Emoji Day, National Day of the Cowboy, and other similar products of a bored populace. It turns out it's just July. It's also festival season, outdoor music season, so much music. And that's kind of how we feel, too, when we explore the E-Town archives. There's so much stuff in there, so much music we haven't heard in a long time. This week, we're starting out with two artists from very different backgrounds. Neither one is really a household name, but we're always happy to introduce you to artists that you may not know. Razia is from Madagascar. She has written songs, and she works to stop illegal logging in her native land. And up first, Reed Fail. He grew up in New England, spent a lot of time shuttling between Massachusetts and Colorado. Here from the E-Town archives, on stage at E-Town from back in 2011, is Reed Fail. And he's in the bathroom, washing the cold from her hand. Wind cracked and weathered New Mexican sand Wondering where the years went Wondering where they go The body of an old car By the side of the road Santa Fe sky Never been kind Left her stuck standing In the back of the line Hard rain it drove her As far as hard rain can Drove her up from Tucson Hit the fan On her bed with a rosary While evangelists plead Call from these crooked streets Singing low, lordy, lordy Where you been for me? Where the lovers leave and they won't come back cause they never 
never do In the empty nets on the sailor's sea In the quiet hills where the tall pines creep And the lonesome eyes scan these crowded streets While the touring bands play the bars for free Singing low, low Please welcome to E Town for her first visit, Razia. Such a beautiful singing voice you have, Razia. We've had a little bit of uh, Malagasy music, I guess, on the show before with a, a group called Tarika years ago. Oh, yes. But. Yes. Um, but this is completely different. It's a big country, right? It's a big landmass. Yeah, they compare it to France and Switzerland together. Yeah. So that's pretty big. I don't and know about you know comparing it with uh, states in the United States, but <laughs> right. But you can imagine it's uh, 20 million people living there, so it's pretty big, and it's a mini continent. This is right. something people don't know. Like you can find every climate of the old world is there. And probably lots of different styles of music throughout, different uh, yeah, dialects. Yeah, different kind of music from the north to the south to yeah. the east to the west. I mean, it's all different rhythms and um, very specific music from Madagascar, definitely. Mm-hmm. When you hear it, you know it's from Madagascar. Oh, cool. I would have but, to practice. But I'm, I'm mixing it up with, you know, some modern things, you know. Right. <laughs> And I understand you grew up in a family that was Muslim, but you wanted to sing in the church choir. Yeah, it's um, so my grandfather, where my name came from, my last name, Saeed, uh, is Muslim, and my grandmother is Catholic, so already there was that mixture there. Oh, okay. And uh, then I moved to West Africa in Gabon, and um, I saw that uh, there were people singing in the choir in the Catholic church, and I asked my mother if I could actually change my religion so I can go in the church choir. And uh, she said, okay. <laughs> so um, I have to say my family was very open. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Not every family would say okay to something like that. But because there was already, you know, the presence of my grandmother being Catholic, so. And um, you lived in France and you lived in Italy and you lived in Ibiza yeah, for then a little I, while? Yeah, then I decided to go to boarding school and uh, continue my schooling in France. Yeah, and then I was different work that I did made me yeah. travel to Italy and to different places. And, and now let's talk about the trip back, your first trip a few years ago when you went back to Madagascar. You know, the first time you really got to see the, the deforestation. Yeah, well, when I uh, decided to do this album, Zibu Nation, I wanted to go back into my roots as far as music and, uh, you know, singing in Malagasy, uh, so I wanted to see a little bit what was there. Uh, so I went with a crew and we went traveling around in the south of Madagascar. And this is what I saw a lot of uh, the burning, the tavi, which is uh, this agriculture mm-hmm. that we're practicing in Madagascar slash since generation yeah. of slash and burn, which is the song that I was singing yeah. about. You know, it was just devastating because there was just smoke everywhere. Uh, and um, as we were going along with that bus going down the south you know, on the main road, there was just smoke and the smell of smoke, and uh, it was really disturbing. So um, that's when I decided that uh, this album was going to be 
about environmental issues and seven of the ten songs are talking about that. Yeah. And it's a beautiful landscape. I mean, just to let people know what is at stake here, uh, Madagascar is a spectacularly beautiful Oh, yeah. Madagascar holds 1% of the world's biodiversity. That's enormous. Right. And we have so many species of orchids and of uh, frogs, of... Uh, uh, 12,000 species of plants, the, as I understand it, and 85% of them are only found on Madagascar. Exactly. So it's really a wealth for the whole planet. Yeah. And... Uh, I think that, you know, people that are really uh, interested in conservation realize that because um, there's more and more budget, not enough, of course, right. but uh, that are going towards helping, uh, you know, s- save that. It's great that you, again, uh, try to harness the power of your music and your creativity and your notoriety on behalf of something that I think is so important, which is you know, the preservation of, I mean, I think it's down to only 1% of the original forest is still standing. And, I know. And, it's, it's and a big percentage of that is burning every year, so. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. And, you know, how lucky that community is to have an ambassador like you, beautiful woman, very articulate, well-traveled, you've got lots of friends. <laughs> I think big things can happen. Well, I'm hoping. <laughs> well, I hope you keep in touch. But meanwhile, we have a lot more music to listen to. So let's yes. get back to some more music. Welcome back <laughs> from Madagascar, and now living in New York, Razia.
That's Razia, along with David Ragioneri on the guitar, and the E-Tones, Ron Jolly on the keys, Greg Garrison on the bass, Helen Forster singing back up, Zach Littlefield on percussion, and Christian on the drums. They did a great job. Thank you, Razia, the international citizen who grew up in Madagascar, lived in France and Italy and Ibiza and New York, and thanks also to Reed Fail. We're going to be back with more from the E-Town Archives after a short break. Your visit to E-Town is made possible in part by the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District, or SCFD, one of the largest cultural funding mechanisms in the United States, supporting nearly 300 organizations in the greater Denver area. And by our family of supporters, including Charlie and Leanne Sander, Brad Feld and Amy Batchelor, and a special thanks to Ed Littlefield Jr. for your continued support. As a reminder, for your viewing pleasure, there are over 2,000 videos on the E-Town YouTube channel, where you can also subscribe in order to stay up to date with our latest offerings. If you're curious about E-Town's home base, E-Town Hall, our beautiful solar-powered music venue, community center, and recording studio located in downtown Boulder, Colorado, you can learn more about it on our website, etown.org. You're listening to E-Town. Welcome back. I'm Nick Forster. We recorded a very special E-Town show in the town of Port Angeles on the Olympic Peninsula back in 2011. Our show was in connection with the decommissioning and removal of a couple of old dams on the Elwha River. These were dams that were disrupting the native salmon runs and were seen as illegal by the local tribal community. We went up there with a bunch of musicians, including Danny Barnes and Eliza Gilkison. But coming up next... We're going to hear my conversation with the congressman who got this big job done in a bipartisan fashion, Congressman Norm Dix. And also we'll hear from the then director of the National Park Service, John Jarvis, live on stage at E-Town, talking about taking out these two dams on a pristine river. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Uh, John, first, um, I guess a little background. You've been in the Park Service, uh, Mr. Jarvis, for more than 30 years. Why should people in other parts of the country be excited about what's happening uh, here on the Elwha? Well, the restoration of the Elwha River it sets a bar across the country for where we can come together, community, tribes, the federal government, um, the state of Washington, and actually restore something. And it it sets a milestone where people can actually work together, uh, which I think this country needs, and, and do something for, for the young people in this audience. This is a gift to them, to their generation, that the fish will be coming back forever. Yeah. And, and Congressman Dix, I know you've uh, obviously you know, had to be a proponent of this project and gather a bunch of support both in Washington and around here. Did you have a lot of opposition at first? Well, there was a lot of opposition here in Port Angeles to this project. I had a town hall meeting and they came in and they said, uh, let's show the congressman how we feel about this project. There were about 120 people there. And the guy said, before I can even get to the microphone, he says, all those opposed stand up. 115 of the 120 stood up. So we had to do a lot of work explaining this project. And there was a gentleman, Orville Campbell from Port Angeles, who had a committee, a bipartisan committee of people here in this community, and they went through all the material, they looked at it carefully, and they came back to the community and said, we should do this. And that's what really turned this thing around. And I, I salute him. Also, the tribe, the Lower Elwha tribe has been here for thousands and thousands of years. And um, 
And they were steadfastly committed to taking out these two dams, which they felt were put there illegally. Now, one was in the park and one was outside the park. Elwha was outside, Glines is inside. But behind those two dams is 70 miles of pristine habitat that has never been adversely affected because it's in the national park. Right. So if we can take these dams out and restore the salmon runs. Today, we were out there, John and I were out there with Secretary Salazar. We looked down in the pool right below the, the dam and there were salmon just swirling around in the water, wanting to go upstream. Right. And this is after 100 years. They still have the instinct to want to go upstream. Yeah. And we're going to make that possible. Yeah. I should mention to our radio listeners who can't see you that, that Congressman, you're a big guy. You're, you're a solid human being, and I understand you're I played a, football for you're the a linebacker for the Huskies, yeah. yeah. And a center and a weak guard. Yeah. The coaches said I was the weakest weak guard they ever had. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't you the guy who's, who, didn't you crack your helmet open at one point? Three or? times. Three times, yeah. <laughs> now, is your, is your sense that Congress is getting a little bit more like football all the time, where there's this just sort of opposition and, and uh, you know, this sort of crush the other team? Team kind of thing? Well, bipartisanship is possible if you have a good idea. And that's, I think this is a great idea. This restoration is going to restore these salmon runs. It's going to be a fantastic thing for the future of this area. Yeah. And, and quickly, Director Jarvis, I don't want to ignore you over there. And I know we've got a politician sitting between us, so it's not, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, it can happen. That was a mistake right away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, we've got the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service coming up in a few years. Could you tell us a little bit about just, in broad strokes, this resource that we all share, the National Park System? The National Park System is an extraordinary resource and an institution that, that really the idea originated in this country. Many say it was our best idea. For 100 years, we have provided these extraordinary places for the American people, for the world. And we are looking to 2016, which is our 100th birthday, yeah. to prepare ourselves for a second century of stewardship and engagement with the American people. And we're very, very proud of the work that we have done, but there's much more to do. And I think that, again, this country needs hope, it needs inspiration, it needs places to go and recreate with family, it needs wild places to experience nature, like Olympic National Park. <laughs> All right. Thanks again to our special guest, the director of the National Park Service, Mr. John Jarvis, Congressman Norm Dix from Washington 6th Congressional District. Guys, you've done a great job on behalf of this project right here. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Norm Dix and John Jarvis. Up next, a little set from Liza Gilkison, followed by a song from Danny Barnes. Thank you. I'm going to do a song that was a hit in 1961, and my dad wrote this song, and it was a hit all over the world. And uh, years later, I, I went to record this song, and uh, well, my dad was still alive, and because I wanted, I thought this song was a, was as if the great Mother Earth herself had spoken, and it sounded like what she would say to us if she was going to sing to us that once we were as lovers, that mankind and nature were as lovers, and that they strolled to these green fields together, and that when they, when they fell out of love, then that this drought came upon the land. And it's a, it's a perfect symbol. And, and uh, I once asked my dad, you know, did you know you wrote the perfect song for the great mother? And he said, Eliza, quit looking for hidden meaning in everything. <laughs> he said, that song wasn't about the great mother, it was about your mother. <laughs> But I still think it was, when I hear it, I hear the mother. <laughs> so the song is called Greenfields. Once there were green fields Kissed by the sun Once there were valleys Where rivers used to run once there were blue skies with 
With white clouds high above Once they were part of An everlasting love We were the lovers Who strolled Through green Fields are gone now, parched by the sun, gone from the valleys where rivers used to run, gone with the cold wind that swept into my heart, gone with the lovers who let their dreams depart. the green fields that we used to roam I'll never know what made you run away How can I keep searching when dark clouds hide the day This wide world left for me to see But I'll keep on waiting Till you return I'll keep on waiting Until the day you learn You can't be happy your heart's on the road You can't be happy Until you bring it home Home to the green fields That me Once again Eliza Gilkerson, welcome back to E-Town. Thank you, Nick. Made the trip from Texas all yeah. the way up here. Yeah. Glad you yeah. did. <laughs> Thank you. It's great that, uh, that we always wind up talking about your dad a little bit. Yeah, he was something. He was a presence, right? Well, he was a great fisherman, so I've, I felt like this connection. I, went, I got to be part of the ceremony today up at the dam site, and I thought about my dad a lot because he loved to fish, and he loved to fish this part of the world, and uh, he loved to go steelhead fishing. So, yeah. yeah. What, what was this? Tell me about the ceremony. Tell, tell me what that was like. Oh, it was so touching. I, I, um, I cried a lot. <laughs> I just kept telling myself, you've got to pull yourself together if you're going to sing today. <laughs> But I think what really touched me, I think, was the uh, uh, stories from the, the native elders today, the, the, the blessing that um, was given by um, Mr. Charles. And um, I, it was so touching, I think it really moved all of us because we realized that these people have, been, have waited 100 years for this moment. And it's yeah. really something, it was yeah. very touching. Did your dad take you fishing when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the part when I got to bang their head on the rock. <laughs> that kind of, you know, I'm not, I don't do it anymore. I, right. <laughs> it's like there was a real decision I had to make there. <laughs> I, sh I should mention that, that a lot of the people here will recognize your dad's songwriting. If they didn't know that song, they would have known certainly, uh, you know, other ones like... Yes, the know, bare necessities bare of necessities life. Of, I mean, of, yeah. If you don't know that one, then you never ha were yeah. a kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I wonder about the uh, connection to the ceremony that you were part of today and, and just whether or not that's something that happens a lot. Do you get asked to be the musical accompaniment for, you know, sort of special things that happen, special events, and particularly sort of heartfelt ones? 
I, am, I write a lot about um, things that I care about in the world right now, and the environment is probably number one on the list, but I also am very interested in, in the politics right now, and I look a lot at the overarching systems of power in our country today, and I, I think those are the things that need changing, and those are the things we need to be talking about. Yeah. Patriarchy, white supremacy, racism. There's a lot of things that we don't put on the table. Capitalism, why, don't, why can't we have a conversation about that without being you know, labeled something? And, right. Yeah. Although it seems like your new CD is a little softer, a little less strident, a little less political. <laughs> more commercial? Uh, you must, yeah, maybe a little more commercial. Maybe you're, you're happier, you're, you're, you know, I don't know, your marriage is working great. I don't, who, who knows what the details are? But. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm a, I'm, I default to joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and have you paid a price for that, do you think, as a songwriter and a performer who thinks about those kinds of issues and wants to include those in your songs? There's a lot of polarity in our country today, and people are, are angry and frightened. And so when you make music that brings up political uh, commentary and... Yeah. Uh, people have a reaction to it. Either they're supportive or they're very angry, and you know they let you know. <laughs> now I know you made your record in uh, in Austin with a bunch of your sort of favorite, you know, the Austin A team, and and it's uh, it must be really comfortable for you to be in that crew and in that community after all these years. Yes, if Austin is an amazing place. It's yeah. a, it is it is truly everything you think it would be in terms yeah. of music. Do yeah. you ever think about if you took a complete left turn and decided you're going to make a record that was going to be you know completely like all mariachi music and you go down to Mexico or all you know classical music or something totally different out of your comfort zone? <laughs> you ever thought about that? I'm always out of my comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, but I have mariachi band on my new record, so I guess you know. You're, I'm pushing my limits yeah. there. <laughs> well, I think it's great that you're a seeker. You know, you're just somebody who's open-minded and looking around and you're incorporating that stuff in your songwriting. Thank you so much. I, I relate to other seekers. Yeah. <laughs> and you're having fun in that trio with John Gorka and Lucy Kaplansky, the, the yeah. red horse. A lot of harmonies. That's fun. Yeah. Well, great. What else, what else is going on before we get back to music? Anything else we need to touch on? I'm involved. I started a community center in Austin. Uh, we are uh, doing a lot of... Um, activism and environmental stuff, and we are part of an advocacy group for the uh, rights of undocumented workers in uh, the U.S. today. Uh, yeah. is, there, um, is, there a, is there a website or something yes. about your community you center? that to, uh, 5604mainer.org, or you can go uh, check out the Workers' Defense Project online. Yeah. Workers' Defense Project. Yeah, they're doing great stuff, getting a, a yeah. really good national stuff, a, a lot of attention being paid, and also a lot of rights for the, for the undocumented workers, uh, safety, job site regulations, that kind of thing. Good for you, Eliza. You're just a, you're, you're a model citizen and a pretty dang good songwriter <laughs> and singer, too. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining us. Let's get back to music. Welcome back from Austin, Texas, Eliza Gilkison. We're going to do a song my brother Tony wrote. This is a... song about a very cranky ghost who's trying to find out where his bones are buried because there's been so much development in his... I never knew that that was what this was about. <laughs> Sometimes helps to explain. I saw this deep meaning in the song. smell just as the last great tree was felled like many that came before it was used for a table and a door a pallet and a long haul rack where hung my great grandfather's hat a stable and a barn a bed and a seat a roof and a fence and a floor that creaked And a coffin leaning against the wall When there was a death in Arkansas I like the wagons and the wheels The wind that knocked us down 
down in the fields And the girls with a southern draw Those that came before were the pictures on the wall And the lone dogs howled and the crows would call When there was a death in Arkansas We were late to rest under the sun And we breathed our last and it was done And the air redeemed us and we would learn That a life was hallowed and we wouldn't Hands folded gently to say goodbye it Was just this place underneath the sky And you see our bones hiding like a toad In the old red dirt that is now a road Beneath a sign that blinks off on And a shopping mall where the house is gone Forgetting that a soul may call When there is a death in Arkansas Trucks roll down the street There's a dollar store by the setting sun And a sign on the church says His will is done I can't see the birds or find the fields That hold my bones beneath the wheels And a mother worries that her son won't call TV stares at the blinking wall But the lone dogs howl and the crows still call When there is a death in Arkansas Right now, would you please help me welcome back to E-Town, Mr. Danny Barnes. Man, oh man, Danny Barnes, it's fun to play music with you. I'll tell you that, but you sound to, great. Good to see you, Nick. Yeah, and, uh, and you're kind of in your neighborhood. Yeah, I'm not far from the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the difference in the music scene, because, you know, people talk about the Texas and the Austin scene, and you were certainly in the middle of that for a long time. So, so it's, a, it's a different thing up here, right? Well, my main interface with the music in the state is with the city of Seattle, and there's yeah. a really good avant-garde scene, really interesting avant-garde music scene, and great punk rock. There's some really great uh, new music composers in, in that area, and great musicians like Bill Frizzell and the composer Wayne Horvitz. And, yeah, a lot of really good musicians there. And my friend Avon Kang, he's a brilliant new music composer and stuff. And there's really interesting electronic music, techno, and different kinds of music in that regard as well. So there's a lot of real cutting-edge stuff over there. It's funny that of all the styles of music you mentioned that you're paying attention to in Seattle, not one of them usually involves the banjo. <laughs> That's how I get work. Yeah. <laughs> you're That's the right. guy. That's right. The one guy. <laughs> um, well, I know just from hanging out with you a little bit, Danny, that you're always uh, reading and you're learning lots of stuff and you love to listen to all kinds of different stuff. I understand lately you're falling back in love with the cassette. Yeah, I, I've been, I research new music and things like what's new that's coming out that's interesting. And uh, I, I come to find out that a lot of very interesting kind of underground bands are putting out music on cassette because it's very inexpensive to do so. And so I started you know, just collecting these cassettes just because I wanted to hear new stuff. 
new recording techniques and new uh, poetic forms and harmonic constructs and things like that. So a lot of it ended up being on cassette. And I started realizing that it, it's a way for like a, you know, an experimental musician to put a product out really fast and really inexpensively. Yeah. And actually, in all honesty, they sound great, you know. They, they got a little bit of surface noise in there. Once you get past the surface noise, they have a great low end on them, yeah. and, and they, they sound great. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to drive whatever it was, an hour or less, from your house they to come down here. Bad, yeah. yeah. I'm just, it's I was cool. just over here on my motorcycle hanging around and rode over here. That's what was going on. Yeah. Drank some espresso. <laughs> Nearly got a speeding ticket on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> That's life, man. That's yeah. life. That's life on 101. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to uh, we're going to hear some more music. Welcome back to E-Town, uh, the local hero and uh, a great guy, Mr. Danny Barnes. Get back to music.
Would you forgive me too? Don't give up on the sunshine Baby, I can still learn a thing or two We'll be back with more from the E-Town Archives after a short break. This portion of E-Town is made possible by the Bohemian Foundation, building stronger communities through the Bohemian qualities of creativity and imagination. On the web at bohemianfoundation.org. And by our diverse family of NPR affiliates and community stations, plus college and commercial stations, as well as our international stations and podcast subscribers worldwide. Thank you for your continued support. In case you tuned in late and you've missed some of this week's program, the E-Town Podcast will have this episode and others, along with content from past shows as well. It's available for free in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast directories. You're listening to E-Town. I'm Nick Forster. I'd like to say hello to our listeners who are hearing E-Town on stations like WXCS, Cambridge Springs, Pennsylvania, independent non-commercial radio, on KBSU in Boise, Idaho, Boise State Public Radio, and on WNCW in Spindale and throughout Western North Carolina. As always, if you'd like some more information about any of the things we're up to at E-Town, you can find out all kinds of stuff at etown.org. I'm Nick Forster. We are continuing to explore some of the best moments from the E-Town archives. Up next, we get to visit with the one and only Arlo Guthrie. But before that, a great singer from Louisiana continuing in the swamp pop tradition. Here comes Mark Broussard with his friend Chad Gilmore on the drums, along with me and the rest of the E-Tones backing him up on stage from 2011. Thank you very much. I think, I think Nick and Helen are going to join me for, this, uh, for these next few t- songs here. Here's a brand new song. It's called Lucky. I think it's a miracle That you're laying here right by my side Someone so beautiful Long brown hair and your pretty green eyes. Maybe I've done something along the way. Sure seems someone smiling down on me, and I'll never have to look for love again. So lucky I found you. So happy.
And where'd you learn how to play like that, Nick? Please welcome back Arlo Guthrie. Yeah, man. Arlo Guthrie, welcome back. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> it, it's so nice to be back here. Thanks for having me. Thank you all. Thank you. You, uh, you look good, look healthy. You sound great. Must be having fun out on the road. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been doing this a long time. You yeah. know, I started, I did my first show in front of people that wasn't like in school in 1961. That is 50 years ago this year, and I'm still having a ball. Yeah. Wow. Last time, last time we saw each other was in uh, Denmark at this big festival, and you were hanging out and spending time over there, and uh, it looked good. Hey, um, how many people are out there traveling with you now in your entourage? You're on the I road. I have no idea. <laughs> it's two buses worth, though. That's right? why I keep them separate. <laughs> so who knows who's on the other bus? But I've got some great friends and family with me. You know, I've got the Burns sisters from Ithaca, New York, Jeannie, right. Annie, Marie Burns. Yeah. Uh, my old time buddy, God's been playing with me over 30 years, Terry Alaberry on the drums. Yeah. And uh, Bobby Sweet on electric guitar, Jody Lamper on the bass. These are neighbors of mine, live yeah. down the road. And of course, my son Abe has been playing with yeah. me since forever. Yeah, that's great. So if anybody in the band isn't related, they feel like they are. Well, I'm so glad you stopped by again. It's been too long, and let's make sure it happens again soon. Meanwhile, we've got an awful lot of music to enjoy right here, right now. I'm with you. You ready? Uh-huh. Sure. All right. Well, let's go. Thank you, Arlo. Welcome back, if you would, along with his fine band, Arlo Guthrie. We have time for one more song. Before we go there, I want to thank all of our guests from this week for once again sharing their archive performances. I want to thank our production team, Todd Ayers, Henry Zimmerman, and a special thanks to Helen Forster. I also want to say a special thanks to Arlo Guthrie, who of course grew up in the shadow of his dad, Woody Guthrie, and others like Pete Seeger, but of course also made his own mark musically and culturally in a big way. Always happy to have Arlo on the show. I'm Nick Forster. Hope you can be with us next week right here in E-Town. The road may be rough and rocky. Temptations may be strong. We may be tried and we may be denied, but we must journey on. Journey on, journey on. We must journey on We may be tried and we may be denied But we must journey on Your friends, they may forsake you Turn their backs on you But in this life we must travel on See our journey through tried and we may be denied, but we must journey on. Maybe it's
Arlo Guthrie, along with Abe Guthrie and Jeannie Burns and Annie Burns and Marie Burns and Bobby Sweet and Jody Lampro and Terry Oliveri. This is a production of E-Town. Okay, there you have it. Part one of our 2011 Best Of show. Some great performances. I'm Nick Forster. Thank you for listening.